Hello, my friends, and welcome back to... No breathing now. Indeed. Today's challenge is probably one of the craziest things I've tried with this game to date, and that's saying something. The goal is to see whether I can play Subnautica whilst holding my breath every time the character goes underwater. Outside of a structure, of course. Now, let's set some ground rules. The challenge today is to get to the point where I can craft the prawn suit in the game, since I think after that I could just stay in the vehicle for the majority of the game and the challenge wouldn't be very interesting anymore. Now I won't be crafting the sea moth to make it a bit more interesting, but I will need to craft better oxygen tanks. We can just pretend that's Riley's lung capacity getting better. Lastly, when thinking of this video, I thought I'd finally thought of an idea nobody's tried before, uh, but that's not the case. So shout out to Paris Shock X who tried a similar thing three years ago. The link to that video will be down in the description. Anyway, bacon face cam jump scare. So anyways, here we are. I apologize for the crazy bright light. It hurts my eyes every time I look at it. I'm staying at like an Airbnb. This is just a nightstand light they had. I don't carry one because I never shoot face cam stuff. So, you know, it is what it is. But since we're doing dumb things again, I bought these. These are like clips for your nose. Let's well, let's try this out. Yeah. With this, I mean, I'll move the microphone away. You'll be able to see that I'm not breathing through my nose and you'll be able to see that my mouth isn't moving and thus I'm not breathing through my mouth. That's about the best setup I can give here. Now, just for the interest of testing, let's see how long I can hold my breath. Just fresh, no prep, kind of one deep breath and let's go. All right, let's do this. <sighs> okay, that's not great for Subnautica, but it will have to do. I'm sweating so hard in this light. Now, with me committing to looking like an idiot for this entire video, we got started. The intro sequence went off without a hitch, probably because you're not underwater during it. And then there I was, the first jump and the first time holding my breath. Luckily, I can say I didn't find it too hard to kind of get into the rhythm of always holding my breath underwater. In fact, it actually felt a little weird afterwards to breathe normally while the character was underwater. Now, to begin with, I was just going to look around for some resources. Luckily, the first two outcrops you break are, I believe, always titanium and copper, so that's a good place to start. I broke some limestone, got some titanium, and the next goal was to get some silicone rubber so I could craft a knife. This was the first, you know, slightly deeper dive, but at this point I wasn't really struggling that much yet. Got the creep vine and I got the knife. Then it was time to hunt for some food, and with some meal prep done, I was making pretty good progress. My next goal was the scanner so that I could quickly pick up new blueprints and get new recipes. I got all the required materials, no struggling yet, and I got the scanner. Now, I did go out then to look for some blueprints, but I was still swimming pretty slowly, so it was making exploring pretty hard. I crafted some fins and an oxygen tank, this would definitely help with exploration. And then it was time to commit to some deeper dives. I went down to the grassy plateaus, and even in the starter areas, these can get close to 100 meters deep, which, with just a pair of fins, no sea glide, and only the base oxygen tank, was definitely not easy. Luckily for my breath, it wasn't actually that bad, so I was able to make some pretty solid progress. Now, the most important thing at this point and in this area would be the laser cutter. But if I saw something else that was cool along the way, I also scanned it just because I have a crippling addiction to scanning stuff in this game. Then I made my way towards the kelp forest and finally found the first piece of something that I would definitely need, which is the mobile vehicle bay. Now again, the goal is to craft the prawn suit. I knew for this I would have to go to the Aurora and there would be a bunch of crafting involved, but I figured I might as well try to amass as many resources as possible before the Aurora explodes. I unlocked the sea glide, the bunch of collecting, even venturing down into the big coral tube. I don't know, for some reason, when you actually have to hold your breath in real life, it just makes it so much more intense, but I was still having a pretty okay time. I do want to point out, though, that it gets harder and harder to recover if you keep doing long dives again and again, which will definitely come into play as soon as we get to the deeper areas. And just like that, I was able to make the sea glide. Now, this bad boy would come in super handy and will effectively just make the run possible. This is also the first time I had an encounter with a crash fish. Yes, I absolutely hate them. Yes, it gives me PTSD to hear that sound they produce, but I was able to get some cave sulfur, so 
success all around. And not much longer after that, one more trip to the grassy plateaus secured me a laser cutter blueprint. Good stuff. But here comes the real challenge. See, the laser cutter requires two diamonds. And diamonds, well, they don't exactly exist in many shallow areas. My best guess as to where I could find one would be the bulb zone. Since it's pretty accessible, it should be relatively safe to dive down there. And I was fairly confident I could do it with just a sea glide and a better oxygen tank. To achieve that, I quickly crafted the high capacity O2 tank, which gave me just enough oxygen to now venture towards the blood kelp zone. As soon as the water turned purple, I stopped at the water surface, I composed myself, took a deep breath, and down we went. Now immediately I realized that this would be much, much deeper than any of my previous dives and as the depth very quickly crossed 100 meters, I knew I was in for some real trouble. Now this could be because I was holding my breath and I was not thinking straight, but I forgot that you don't get diamonds out of sandstone outcrops. So I broke a bunch of these only to realize no diamonds would come out of them. And of course, the limiting factor here wasn't just my character's oxygen, but also my real life oxygen, which at this point actually happened to align pretty quickly. Like, Usually by the time I was about to run out of oxygen in-game, I was about to also suffocate in real life, so I can say I've never been more immersed in this game. This took a while. Dive after dive, I went down, always having to compose myself on the water surface, take some time to, you know, slow my breathing down and whatnot. But eventually, slowly, I got my hands on some diamonds. And let me tell you, diamonds are like the freaking rarest thing ever here. Like, I had to break so much stuff to even get one. But with enough persistence and two batteries, I was eventually able to get two diamonds. With them in my pocket, I commenced to swim back, and with one more cave sulfur in my pocket, we got our hands on the laser cutter. Now at this point, I actually took a break, and I came back the next day, and for some reason, as soon as I unpaused, the aurora decided to explode, so here it goes. And that only meant one thing. I now had the radiation suit blueprint. Now crafting it wasn't particularly challenging, so I quickly built myself a new outfit. And at this point, I also decided to build the mobile vehicle bay, which I'd finished finding the parts for earlier. I went up, deployed this thing, and then, well, it was time to go to the Aurora. Now, I also want to point out here, the reason you see me taking off the nose thing every once in a while is just because it was becoming really painful for some reason. Oh my god, it's so painful after a while. And if I was spending any more time either crafting in the life pod or just standing around on platforms, I would always take it off and just let my nose rest a bit. Anyways, I geared up with some water, a little bit of food, and I headed for the base ship. Had to do one breath hold just to avoid the terrifying reaper at the front. But as you might know, the majority of the Aurora exploration actually happens on land. So for once, I can actually say this was probably the easiest part of the challenge, as opposed to when we did this with no water. Normally you need the propulsion cannon here, but you can also just jump over. And before you know it, I was in the prawn suit bay and I got myself the prawn suit blueprint. Now this thing isn't easy to build and so as I was swimming back towards the life pod, in my mind I was kind of thinking of just the crazy challenge it's going to be to build this. Now as I stopped on the upside down life pod, I quickly realized one of the things you need are two diamonds. And <laughs> I still had nightmares from collecting diamonds the previous day, but it was honestly the best way I could think of. So right back we went. Yep, that's right, I swam right back towards the mushroom forest and the bulb zone, just hoping I could quickly collect the diamonds. Spoiler alert, I couldn't. At least not quickly. Now I'm not gonna bore you here by showing you the freaking 25 dives it took to get to two diamonds, but I will say, whilst down there, I also collected some other resources which I knew would be necessary, such as rubies and lithium. It did eventually turn into night, but as the sun was rising above the life pod, I was nearly home with a big chunk of the resources. Now I collected all of the remaining stuff around the safe shallows. It was always funny how after taking the super deep dives, coming back to the shallows felt so safe and simple. Like suddenly holding my breath for 45 seconds while swimming around there just felt like nothing. At last, the time had come for the most difficult ingredient of this challenge which is the gel sack. Now these things are kind of like diamonds in the sense that they don't really spawn anywhere shallow, at least as far as I know, but I figured the best place to get these would probably be the blood kelp zone. I mean, yeah, the area is kind of narrow, but you can dive there from the surface. And if I was just smart about the places where I dived to cover a lot of space quickly, I was hoping I would be able to lock out. So yet again, I composed myself, I take a deep breath, and down we went, and let me tell you, this time was really deep. We crossed 100 meters, then 200 meters, and once we crossed 300 meters, 
I was getting really worried. Not just for suffocating in real life, but also because the oxygen tank I had at that time just wasn't gonna let me have a lot of time down there. After what was probably only like 10 seconds or so, I immediately had to go back up with no gel sacs because there just weren't any in the immediate area. Now, I decided to venture a bit further and let me tell you, I was expecting to be here for a freaking hour, but at last, I actually got lucky for once and the second dive I took took me to an area with a glowy plant and two gel sacs right next to each other. But now we were in trouble because as I tried to swim up, I realized, oh crap, there's a ceiling here. Looking back down to the left made me realize, oh crap, I'm running out of oxygen. And there was more cave ceiling. Not only was I struggling holding my breath in real life, at this point, I seriously thought like, oh, I'm dead. I'm not making this out. But luckily, thank God for that mechanic they implemented where you don't immediately die as soon as you hit zero oxygen. I was able to make it out before I passed out in real life and I had all of the ingredients to craft the bronze suit. Super tired, exhausted, out of breath, but happy. I made my way back to the life pod and as the morning set, I stepped onto the platform and I built the prawn suit, rendering this challenge complete. So guys, that was playing Subnautica whilst holding my breath in real life. I don't think I would recommend this challenge. I mean, you can try it with a couple of dives, but trying to play the game seriously like this is quite uncomfortable. My nose afterwards felt quite sore, mad respect for swimmers who wear these for like hours at a time. And I seriously hope you guys enjoyed this and found the video entertaining. And if you liked the video, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. All of those would be very much appreciated. With that, I want to wish you all a beautiful rest of the day, and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Bye-bye.